Right. Hey guys, talking business with Ryan and Andre. So happy new year to you guys, 2024. Welcome back everyone. Hope you all had a great holiday season and hope yeah. 24 is off to a good start. And you know, we were talking about what we wanted to talk about in January. And, and I think, we have some how do you start the year off on the right foot? Exactly. You know, what can you yeah. do? You know, we, we get to the end of the year, we get to, you know, Thanksgiving to Christmas, it's a blur. And, and you're not thinking about your business. Well, you, you know, are, sometimes but you're not. you have to, but not your end stuff. Right. And, and a lot of people, I don't think, want to. So we have some notes. We actually came prepared. Yeah. <laughs> and I think um, you get into that, yeah. that December mindset and you're putting out fires and you're wrapping things up and so many things are, oh, we'll look at that after the holidays. We'll look at that after the holidays. So then you come back and you have a forest fire you're trying to put out. There's yeah. so many things hopping up and your all your numbers are back to zero. I mean, we know that here. We track yeah. you know new Same. members and deposits and things like that. Yeah. You work all year to, to accumulate these. Yep. How many people did we help? How many people have we you know done great things yeah. for? And then you're back to zero. So yeah. I think just a little checklist for a business owner and some of the business owners that I've worked with for a really long time, they, yeah. they really do this. This isn't just... A, something you talk about you right. know it's four or five key be, things though. before you get in that whole you know before the first quarter's over and then the second quarter and some and you from know. you know i i want to add to like exactly what you're saying but to, just to add like from a leadership perspective like one of the things is you you have to finish the year right so you're in january you're kind of working to close out the year mm -hmm. But then your, your team, the focus, initiatives, objectives, your, your goals, you're working on the new year. So you're kind of, now that's every month, but definitely year end, there's a lot of things. And we kind of want to cover them. Yeah. So um, I, I love I mean, just sitting down and, and off the top, just sitting down and how did you do last year? Yeah. How yeah. much revenue did you do? With top line, how much money came yeah, in the front door? The first question. You know, was it better or worse than you expected. And a lot of these things, and a lot of, everybody's into technology and all that, I get it, but more often than not, I see business owners have a notebook. Mm. They kind of have an owner's notebook that they jot down notes or things. Yeah. And, you know, if, if, yeah. if that's not something you do, go grab a notebook, they're yeah. a dollar at the store. You know, just really what do you need to go back and look at that? Yeah, that shows you, you know, the growth yeah. and, and why, you know, if last year you expected to do $600,000 in sales, you're either above or below that. Why? Did yeah. you pick up new customers? Did you, you know, what are those things, you know, really and, review last year? Yeah, and, and even, so let's say you beat it, hmm? right? But like you're saying, right, most people might not, like, say, well, we beat it. Okay, but why? Like, right. Sit down and, like, take a little bit of time to, like, talk about that. Because it matters. Is it sustainable? Exactly. Did, did, was yeah. there a UAE a one -time thing construction or, yeah. company and you, you struggle along and a building had a, a car headed or a fire or some kind of large, it yeah, wasn't, yeah. you were getting the business no matter what, but you didn't really go find it. You didn't grow it. You didn't cultivate it. It wasn't from a regular customer. It was this one off. Yeah. So yeah. I think sitting down and looking and say, hey, and, and celebrate a little bit. Like how did 23 go? Yeah. What was our top line? And we all know that the accounting can get tricky, and especially with transportation customers, with depreciation and stuff, but how did it go? Like, really take a look at it, and at the same time, use that to kind of formulate a game plan for 2024. What do we expect to do in revenue? Who are mm -hmm. our best customers? And, um, you know, it doesn't have to be... Profit, expenses, right? All, all of that. Yeah. Like, what do you... I mean, there's obviously inflation the last couple of years... That's had a, I think, and monumental. Like, that's a huge. In your employees, too, it's had, right? Um, you know, I think, lives so to your point on inflation, you know, yeah. we talk a lot about revenue and, and growing the business and things like that, but there's defensive plays, too. So yeah. your insurance coverage, for example. Mm. So yeah. the building that we're sitting in right now was built 30 years ago for X number of dollars. If we had to rebuild it today, it oh. would be a lot more than that. Way more, yeah. But do we Are know? But do we know? Yeah. Well, one, are you insured? And two, are you insured for the proper amounts? Yeah. So a building that maybe 10 years ago would have cost $500,000 to rebuild if there was a fire it or it could be double or more now. So yeah. I would say that's one thing. Sit down with your insurance professional. Mm -hmm. If you don't have an insurance professional mm -hmm. and you use some call center or website, that's probably something you need to look at. You know, there's not a lot of cost savings there. 
And to have somebody who you is responsible, you call, pick up the phone, they should be part of that trusted advisor group. You've got an accountant, CPA, you've got an attorney, you've got a real estate guy, you need an insurance person. And, and a lot of times that's something that's overlooked. And we'll get to it, we'll get to it. You don't always get to it. Or if you and have... It's good to talk to them, right? They don't I mean... It's good to kind of pick their... Like, and maybe you're... And you build that relationship you have heavy equipment. Too. Maybe you're not doing as much parking lot work anymore and you've got some heavy equipment that's fully insured mm. but you don't need it to be fully insured for replacement cost because you are not going to replace there. it you know maybe they're savings if it maybe it does cost some more maybe you're upping your insurance expense to be properly protected yeah because the last thing you want is god forbid something happened to the building the insurance company says wow that's horrible i'm sorry that happened to you here's your money and that money's not enough to rebuild it so yeah. You know, a lot of times something that you had no control over. No, and it's sometimes credit, backwards uh, police little, when you have yeah. loans because the credit union, the bank, whoever has the loan wants to see the insurance and make sure it's the proper amount. But for yeah. things you've paid off, it's it's just a good hour exercise to sit down, okay. look at all your policies, and and look at you know are they correct? If they are, great, fine. You know, same kind of thing with. Um, you know, with, with, yeah. with your insurance premiums, mm -hmm. automate it. You yeah. know, do they have a six payment schedule? Yeah. Do they have a 12 payment schedule? Do you pay, is there a benefit if you, you know, save 5% to pay up front? It usually is. Yeah. You're, you're, you're paying for your insurance anyways, Andre. I mean, over the course of the year, so why not save 5% up front and just put it aside? I reviewed it with you. This is the cost. Here's your check. We'll look at it again. And you save 5%. Year. Yeah. Or and it pays for your time to do it and automating those things those those regular insurances mm -hmm. or things you know if you forget to pay your cell phone bill because you've got a lot of noise going on in the business it's the worst thing you get a nasty text and they tell you to pay your cell phone bill if insurance lapses there's there's a lot more so i would i would say look at your mm -hmm. expenses that can be automated in general to automate anything you can even if you automate it to bill a credit card and then review it when you get your credit card statement, you're going to pay it anyways and yeah. got to make sure. And you're saving time, right? Time is the most expensive commodity nowadays. Right? You can't buy it. Nope. So nope. So that's, that's you always... You two minutes there, six minutes there, eight minutes there. And, it's, and it keeps it's, you focused on what you're doing because you know it's automated. Yes. And those important things that go to grow the business. You know, it's January. We all got emails and, and thank you notes and fruit baskets from people we've done business with and all those things, but check in with your customers. You know, a lot of industries, January is a pretty slow month. Most people are in the office in January. It's a good time to, people are in that mindset check of how are we setting up for this yeah. year. Who are your biggest customers? Back to that first review and your number. You know, most of our customers, Andre, a good portion of their sales, 50% or more, come from a couple of customers. Mm. You know, do they have new people there? Oh, I used to work with Richard. He was the owner, and now I work with Scott. And you don't really know Scott, or you know, it. it you really just and things change too when you grow, right? There's new people that come into the yeah. organization. There's a change, you know, especially if you kind of leaps and bounds. If you've grown two x, three x in the yeah. last, you know, year two, three, four. I mean, you're a completely different team than yeah. And those work. personal, you know, so many b companies do business with another company, and it's mm. funny. Even in my life, I'll finally meet somebody in real life, and I'll look at him and be like, "You're Janice." Like I've emailed and talked to you for ten years to yeah, her, never, yeah. and I've never met her in real life. Especially the last know? couple of years with COVID and stuff. I mean, yeah, and I think we've, you know, I'm not going to say moved on, but I think we've all got to our own comfort level with that, and and how that this is just going to be something we're going to be living with for a long time, but. You know, go out and see some customers. Go visit them. It doesn't have to be formal. You know, but yeah, if you're working with a doctor, you can't walk in and expect to interrupt surgery to shake his hand. But look at, course, you yeah. know, make that a little more personal. It doesn't have to be a, although it's great, social media post or things like that or just another invitation to some Christmas party, but, like, stop by. Ask them how their business is doing. Solidify that. Shake hands. And just yeah. get you out of the office. You're going to stick out like a sore thumb, right? You are. And they're going to remember, and it's it's really, you know, businesses of people. And you learn. That's, Andre, that's what we go out, that's why we go out and see our business customers. When you're in their, in their zone, in their building, in their home, basically, yeah. they'll tell you what's coming up. And if they there's spend, something we can help with. They spend know? sometimes more time at the office Most than do. at home. Yeah. Most do. Most spend more waking hours at the office than at home. 
So you go out there and you talk to your customers and see what's going on. How can you keep those customers? Mm -hmm. You know, usually your customer base, if you're doing a good job and they're happy with you, that's your best source of business. Yeah. That's yeah. For, for me yeah, here. The, you know, they, they have a good experience. Yeah, most new business we come across yeah. at the credit union was referred by somebody. Every now and again, yeah. somebody will walk in or every now if you have good search engine optimization, somebody might find you. But, you know. Generally speaking, it's. Yeah. yeah. Do you have an email list? That's the last one. That's the last mm. one. If you don't have an email list, I'm not a tech savvy person, but even I can put together an email list. Depending on what industry you're in, maybe that's something that you mm. could do that's and send a quarterly. There's a bunch of like, tools where you could build lists and it'll send out yeah. notifications or letters. And just staying in front of them and just yeah. staying, you know, you don't want the next person to knock on their door and take your best customer because you were a little bit lazy and didn't go out and see them. Everybody mm. loves it. So, yeah, yeah that works good. Uh, okay, taxes, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Talk yeah. I hear this obviously. all the time. Next year, I'm going to dot, 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 dot. Next year, I'm going to, we're going to implement, there's no better time than January. Mm. Most everybody's financial year lines up with the calendar year nowadays. So, mm. if yours doesn't, this still applies to you, but most people, it does line up. So, I was going to start on QuickBooks. I was going to use this accounting program. I know I need to mm, mm, mm. let your pass-ins be your pass-ins. Know that everything 23 and behind maybe is a bit of a mess. But moving forward in 24, there's some great free programs out there for tracking expenses and taking pictures of receipts and you know a little bit of work rather than come September, October, and you start thinking about taxes and start thinking about how you're doing and you've got this pile of mm. garbage and receipts and hand scribbled things and handwritten checks and some things paid on your personal credit card and you know just come up with a plan on how you're going to do it mm. i'm not saying don't use a personal credit card for business expenses and i'm not saying to do that but if that's what you're doing at least keep yeah. it clean keep it and clear I, I, and i think like that's the, there's there's like little subtle differences i find uh, you, you know, that, that separate businesses that separate like that. And it, it's sometimes not even like, a, like a, a, a verbal thing, but it's like little clues, like you're saying, like automating your payments. Mm -hmm. Like if you meet a business owner and you're there and something about, you know, documents or paperwork and everything is just available, mm -hmm. you know, that in and of itself speaks volumes about the operation as opposed to well, let me look at a notebook mm -hmm. and open it up. Oh, I think this is how much I did in revenue. Right. right. Staying on top of that. And we do. Yeah. As a lender, I expect what we ask for financial yeah. documentation Especially wise is not intrusive. It's not overwhelming. I mean AI. But you should be able to you should be able to produce it pretty quick. Yeah. And you really should because as a business owner you need to know and a lot of guys I got it up here in my head. And I think on the personal side too, as you get your sort of, there's like some harmony between personal and business. As you as you find kind of that organization and that cleanup on the personal side, it affects your business. If you do it on the business side, it could sort of just flow in and then you organize your personal and things just flow. You save a couple minutes there, a couple minutes there. And it doesn't have to be a whole rework, Andre. Right, yeah. If you do a couple things better, if there's a couple ways you, like we teach our kids, just yeah. do better than you did before. Like it doesn't have to be perfect. It will always be a work yeah. in progress. Yeah. You could have a full-time CPA on staff and a bookkeeper, and there still could be better. It still could be more clear. Yeah. But you know, just basically never stop improving. <laughs> never stop improving and let the past yeah. be the past. If it was never a mess in the past, let okay. it be yeah. past. That's a great one too. You know, never stop learning. Yeah. What what conferences? What classes mm. maybe not for you maybe for some of your employees it's a great tool mm. for retention mm -hmm. it's a great tool to help them feel important yeah to go to whether it's a trade show or a, a class um, you know Macomb Community College has great continuing education classes mm. QuickBooks for beginners uh, pivot tables in Excel you can really and it all depends on what your business is but employees like that if you give them a bonus of whatever a couple hundred dollars it goes away pretty quick but to increase their skill set yeah and send them somewhere on the clock they're not coming and... to the credit union that day they're yeah. going to a place to learn about something with other people in their field 
um, and for yourself, you know, I know you take, you know, leadership management courses and, and mm. things like that. You know, we, nobody's a complete project. We all can learn. And I, I love it. I love getting around those folks and because they're yearning and they want to learn and they want to, and they'll tell you what book they read and they tell you what story or what problem they solved. And you're like, and sometimes like what, what, what's interesting that I think gets missed is, uh, it's like, so, so you sign up to the class and you go to it, right? And some people don't like traveling or swimming or whatever. But like, some of the most valuable like little things I picked up that made the difference was during the, the, the little 15 minute break. Mm -hmm. Or just before the meeting starts, I got there a little bit early and I was able to meet some people because I got there early. Or I stayed late and I talked to somebody X amount of time, I asked them a couple questions and it was a real live case hey, this is what we're doing right now to solve this problem. This we all have the, the same risk. general problems in business. Exactly. We yeah. do. And yeah. Jamie Dimon always he talked about reading books. That he's, mm -hmm. He read a lot of books. And his concept behind that was, you know, somebody takes all this information and data yep. that they've learned, they distill it down into the parts that they see are most important, and then you can consume it. So you take, it's the funnel yep. approach, basically. of all yep. this data about... Somebody could have worked on some, on a particular an engineer could have worked on something mm -hmm. on an invention for twenty five years, and he wrote about it in a book that you can read in a couple of days. Right. So you can get all that knowledge all at once. Same it's thing with conferences, and it's yeah. one of those things. And and I'm guilty of it too. You know, next year I'm gonna be better about going out into the community and doing. If you don't schedule it, and I think get it on the thing. schedule it's, now, it is a calendar. Yeah. Is, is have it on the schedule now because then it's just something you work around because there's never going to be enough time you're always going to be busy yeah. there's not there's always going to be something and let's be honest in june and july most people don't want to go to a training class in no. january it's something you can think about and if it's and if you made the commitment you know why you made it and you did it mm -hmm. in, in january for april and you already scheduled it and you got the ticket I mean, chances are you're gonna go you're gonna go you know because you've already put the action into the motion. Also, I wanted like AI tools, right? With like virtual assistants. I mean, you might not want to think about whether it's Alexa or Siri, you're yeah. for it, you're against it, whatever the case may be. But there's so many like variations of that now where you could delegate a whole bunch of things mm -hmm. to basically tools. Or if you want like a virtual assistant from whatever abroad. Yeah. You know, it might cost you a few dollars, right? And if you break down and you know like this, what we talked about, your expenses, your to-dos, your how much is your time worth, right? Yeah. Do you value your time? Do it's highest and best use, Andre. Same yeah. way when we appraise a building. We have to say, is what is, if this isn't, what is the highest and best use of mm. this building? Mm -hmm. What is the highest and best use of Andre's time? Yeah. And that's what your focus should be. And you... I think you become a little bit more cautious of your time, and it's not the yeses that you say, it's actually kind of the no's, the because no's. you're more organized in what you, know, yeah. you need to do, and I think as a business owner, I mean, you kind of need complete control of your time, because there's so many things flying at you, I mean, yeah. you don't know what problems are going to lie tomorrow. And with those um, educational things and seminars and all that, you know, look outside of, of just what you do. So let's say you're a CPA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, CPA conferences and stuff are, are nice, but let's say you're a CPA that mostly does trucking companies. Mm. Maybe going to something trucking related yeah, would be more than you are at the who you're serving. Right. So Start it's not always a direct, yeah. you know, I sell bottled water. There's no conference for bottled water. Maybe, Maybe there is. I don't know, but, you know. <laughs> So then what do you do? How do you, how do you get to that? You know, yeah, how do you yeah. look at it a little bit differently? But, you know, having a calendar and tying it into AI and virtual and, you know, our personal lives and business lives are so interconnected, you know, it's hard to manage yeah. sometimes. But it, I think that's one of those things that will always be kicked down the road for, for most people of further education. It doesn't have to be a master's. Maybe it is a master's degree. Maybe it is something like that. Yeah. But just a class or a three-week class on, if you're a real estate agent, maybe a three-week class on photography would be great because maybe it would up your game in the photos you take in the property. Maybe. 
I'm and sure if nothing else, you learn a little bit more about photography. You know, there's always... And you meet people in the class. That you right. Maybe you meet your next <laughs> customers there. So, so there's a lot of things like that that I would say, you know, that continuing education and, and learning for the sake of learning. Um, and if it's, you know... You know what would be cool is if we would go somewhere, right, and we would kind of keep our audience uh, informed yeah. while we're at some, like, event... Yeah, you know, so thirty great. sixty days. From yeah, we'll take a minute next event. Well, yeah, we yeah. can we could go live from from some event and yeah. you know sort of grow and actually it'd be really interesting to hear like any comments like if there's um, you know any business owners or what have you if you know of uh, uh, maybe you could share with with our like community yeah. like what events you're attending uh, maybe you're in uh, you know transportation uh, industry or you know CPA or in finance or in lending mortgages what have you. Uh, that'd be actually really interesting. Yeah, it'd be, yeah. It'd be great to, yeah, to get a little inside to? information on what people see as valuable. And 100%. It'd be, yeah. You know, for us, it's, I, I love getting We have a very diverse client base here. You know, we have, we have some concentrations in some fields, but we've got everything from ophthalmologists to engineering firms yes. to... Yeah. You know, Actually, real estate. Architect, art, yeah, I mean, we... NASA, and, I mean, it's, yeah, it's awesome. It's, it's fun. It's pretty amazing, yeah. So the, just the different diversity of different classes and things out there, and again, it doesn't have to be expensive. A community education class at Macomb South Campus, five minutes from where we're sitting right now. Yeah, there's um, a bunch of classes. There's yeah. tons of classes there, and a lot of them start in the, you know, they call it spring semester. It really starts after the new year, yeah. you know, yeah. in, in, you know, yeah. get out there. See what's out there. And, yeah. Get out there. I think it's um I think to to luck out here I know you have uh probably the most important you know we've really kind of been talking about this yeah but, um, uh, I mean setting goals yeah so goals get real when you write them down goals get real when you talk about them goals get real when you circle back to them you know a lot of what we do in financial services is based on goals how many people do we want to help refinance their car this month how many people do we want to help get a lower rate on their mortgage you know we look at it that way but you know as a business owner regardless of what your business is set some tangible goals for the year maybe you can get even more fancy you know some short-term goals some long-term goals you know you go into a year and just say well we'll see what happens i'll see you in january next year it doesn't you know what do you you know in, in, you could really i wrote down sure. some but you know increasing a revenue stream mm -hmm. so that could be a revenue stream within your company yeah. So most companies have more than one revenue stream. You know, maybe that means a different type of customer, or local instead of long distance, or whatever it is. Let's diversify, what, change what it up. What tangible yeah. thing can you do to increase an existing revenue stream? Mm -hmm. So we all want to reinvent the mousetrap, but like, mm -hmm. look at your book. Look at the people who pay you money. Where can you get more? Yeah, and I think you just become, yeah, I think you become a lot more... Um, attractive to other customers, to lenders, to partners, to somebody you might want to buy, or through your kind of search or somebody that you could, you know, expand with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because you're you're thinking about the progression as right. opposed to just only let's say. And you break friends. it down. We all want to do more in sales, right? Most people want to do more in sales. Yeah. But how? Well, how do you get there? You know, increasing. So think of it as a, a stream of water shooting out. And this one customer is a stream this big. If I can make this stream that big, I don't have to meet anyone new. I know how they pay. Uh, we know each other. How can I increase those revenue streams? Um, you know, the, the, the second step is diversifying the products or services you offer. Okay. Is that, mm, you know, interesting. if yeah. you were a camera shop 20 years ago, camera shops aren't as popular as they once were. Nope. There's a small niche that still goes to camera shops. But maybe you got into digital cameras, or maybe you got into screen, you know, providing screens yeah, for that like stuff. Yeah, like there's you know, videographers and all of They make the, the, the thing in the basement where they, you know, you can yeah. watch your movie in the basement, have it turned all the way up, and you know, you know, that's all that same, you know, what other product offerings? Do you, is it easy? Do you have customers asking you, please start carrying a cheeseburger? All you carry is hamburgers, start carrying a cheeseburger. Like, it's probably pretty Listen. easy. Right. I think the big one there is probably listening. Yes. Are you, uh, you know, do you have some kind of a matrix to get feedback, and then do you have a process for that? Right. Mm -hmm. Like if somebody leaves you a review, let's say it's a positive review, let's say it's a negative review, or it's just the feedback, like make cheeseburgers. Yeah. Like, does that get to the owner? 
And as an sure. owner, you should have a firm, and but you need to ask the team and kind of look around, like, does that actually go up, right? Because you might be an owner of one, but what if you have 47 employees mm -hmm. and you're not, you're in one area and they're in a different area, physically or whatever, yeah. digitally. Or the message just doesn't does get to you. Go, yeah, does it, does it go up to you? Or does it go up to somebody that could do something about it? Yeah, and some of it's yeah. interest back, you know, re be reflective. As, I, yeah. as the leader of this company, am I open to yeah. my employees or my suppliers or my customers bringing me new ideas? We all want to say yes immediately, but it's not yeah. true. Some people yeah. are closed off to that. So how yeah. can I be a better listener and, and, you know. And there's always, like, outside circumstances, right? Like, let's say if you have... Um, if, if you're kind of not in touch, like you said, to go out and meet with your regular customers, mm -hmm. you know, what if you had a big customer and then they're going through something, mm -hmm. right? If you don't go visit them and have that conversation, you might not learn, hey, you know, you're, they're going to leave you because you don't have X, Y, Z, because they had changes yeah. and because of, I would say like data security too, not to kind of go off yeah. the there, but like, a, this is a huge one right now. Yeah, that's, that's all that's, you see in the news. Yeah, yeah. So um, that and it, it's not some. It's because it's fairly new. It's not something that most people know or understand, or what the effects are. What do you do? How do you do it? Insurance is a great partner in yeah. sort of explaining things and and all that too. And I think it's only going to grow. Yeah. You know, both the risk side, the opportunity side, the how information goes through your organization, in your organization, out of your organization, how third parties affect you, right? It might not be anything you did, but... I, I would say a step above that and something to really look at, and depending what your industry is, you know, we've all got used to email over the last 20 years, right? Mm. But so much heartache and financial hardship comes from emails, from bad actor emails, mm. from fake emails, from mm. send the money here, not there. You get a virus on your computer. You know, I had an old boss that just he preached, pick up the phone, pick up the phone and talk to somebody. Mm. So I understand a lot of what we can be doing this can is be done through email. To but to is you. there a better option? Mm -hmm. Should should we really be emailing X Y Z information, or is a Dropbox a better option? whatever Dropbox, doesn't matter which one. You know, is, is something, is encrypted email something that now it's time to move up to encrypted email? You know, how do you communicate? From a, from a safety, if nothing else, just from a safety perspective, mm. to protect your information, every, one of, every business owner has a computer that they keep something on. Mm. It may be minuscule, it may be paramount, but it's somewhere in the middle. So are you communicating safely with your customers, well, with your suppliers, with your vendors? Yeah. Do you have processes in place if, if a vendor says, hey, send my payment here instead of there, do you and, have a process yeah. to verify that? Or do you and just take the email? And, and it's your reputation. I know we want to go fast and we want to be the Amazon or the whoever right that that processes things quickly but yeah especially with that, electronic really payments which we'll do more on electronic payments coming up we will but you know with with the speed of an electronic payment if, if 30 years ago somebody sent my business a fraudulent invoice and somehow it got past everybody and we cut the check we mailed it i still got a time before that check comes in maybe Not i can anymore. stop payment but I Venmo somebody money, it's gone. I wire somebody money, it's gone. Yeah. So I would say Let's that's... Let's talk about electronic. Yeah, electronic <laughs> security would be another conversation. That's coming. But, that's the next but I would just say that's something that you really should be... <laughs> you know, we've all got a little too complacent with email. And email was never meant to be a safe system. Um, so I'd say when you're, when you're looking at last year's production and things like that, and it kind of goes along with increasing one of your revenue streams is adding more repeat customers. Mm. Are you in a business, and most people are, that there's a lot of repeat customers. I mean, yeah. maybe you provide a hydraulic pump that, you know, blows once every 20 years and that's not your business model. Most of us do business with the same people over and over. So how do you turn a one-off customer or a smaller customer into a repeat customer? How do you give them that mm. amazing customer service or that amazing timing or the price or whatever it is? Um, but, you know. That's a good one because I think a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, information 
ads, tools, funnels, all this popular stuff that talk about how to bring in the new people. Mm -hmm. But not a lot of people really talk about just those turning your current customers, because they're the best source of reference, yeah. right, of additional business, of really listening to, getting feedback from. Yeah, um, the devil you know is always better than the devil you don't. You've, exactly. You already know that you can do business together. How can you, maybe that is expanding yeah. your product line. Maybe that's, well, I didn't know you needed it always next day, sir. I can get it next day. Or you pay X number of dollars for next day, and that's all that supplier does. But if you don't need it till next week, we'll ship it ground and save you 30%. Save and, and, save and, you, and you don't care just because nobody's asked the question. So yeah. I think, you know, to, to look at it, you know, it's a great time. It's a fresh start. We all make resolutions. People... Pretend they're going to go to the gym all year, and I'm going to drink more focused. water. But like right. as a business owner, you know, review last year, set some goals and priorities for this mm -hmm. year. Make sure you're properly protected. I can't tell you how important that one is. And mm -hmm. and it, in the years leading up to this, we haven't had the runaway inflation that we have now. Yeah. You could be severely underinsured. Oh yeah. So that's that's one. If you want to walk away with an action item, that's yeah. what I'm going to tell you right now. Insurance. Review your insurance. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So thanks, thanks for guys. having me. Yeah, thank Great you. Great to see you. Happy New Year to everybody. We'll see you all thank soon, and we'll take you out on the road with us.